Brett's timing is incredible. We got this presentation this week, and the scripture for this week deals with the spirit of the law. Listen to Jesus speaking in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 21 through 37. You've heard that it was said to those of ancient times, You shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you're on the way to court with him, or your accuser may hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard, and you'll be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will never get out until you've paid the last penny. You've heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It's better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It's better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to go into hell. It was also said, Whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that anyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of unchastity, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you heard it said to those of ancient times, You shall not swear falsely, but carry out the vows you have made to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything more than that comes from the evil one. This ends our reading. Please join me in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Last Sunday, we heard Jesus say that he had come to fulfill the law, not to abolish it. Our reading today shows us how it is that he fulfills that law. He takes the commandments the basic laws by which civilization functions and expands them to include the Spirit of God in the understanding of those laws. Thou shalt not kill gets expanded to include not just the taking of life, but the diminishing of life through anger, name calling, and holy grudges. In the same breath, Jesus equates the seriousness of wronging our brothers and sisters or our neighbors with murder. He tells us that harming others is a barrier to our relationship with God and that before we seek God's forgiveness, we must first make things wrong with those we've injured. The spirit of the law. It's not enough to follow the Big Ten Commandments. We must consider the heart the original author. God expects more from us than avoiding murder. God expects us to support life. It's not enough to be technically within our legal rights in our marriages and romantic relationships. We must treat other humans with worthiness and dignity, even when we find it impossible to live with them. 
Jesus was against divorce for a very important reason. Divorcing a woman, and this is something where gender is important, a man divorcing a woman could happen. A woman could not divorce a man. Divorcing a woman put her life in jeopardy. She would no longer have a means of supporting herself or even a home to live in. In Jesus' day, divorce was a legal glorification of attitudes that treated women as commodities. In condemning divorce, Jesus was saying that a man could not give a woman a decree of divorce freeing himself much the same way as he could, he could sell livestock to another man. The spirit of the law does not allow us to treat people that way. It's not enough to avoid lying. We must also be willing to speak the truth against power and authority and against bullies and against anything that diminishes the value of another human. Not only should we not lie or be a party to the lies of others, we must be careful about swearing an oath. Jesus says we should let our yes be yes and our no be no. In other words, if we are known as a person who is completely honest, there's no need for us to ta attach an outside authority to our words. We don't need to swear on a Bible or to say, so help me God, if we are people who don't lie. The spirit of the law demands that we respect others enough to deal with them with integrity. Jesus takes this living in harmony with the spirit of the law so seriously that he suggests we eliminate any body part that causes us to sin. I don't think self-mutilation was really what he was looking for. I think he wanted us to see that when we fail to fulfill the law in our actions, we harm ourselves as much as we harm others. So don't harm yourself by harming your neighbor. Each of the Ten Commandments can be expanded upon with this attitude of fulfilling the law. The first four can be lumped together into one massive commandment. I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt have no other gods. No graven images or likenesses. Don't take the Lord's name in vain and remember the Sabbath day. In other words, this is the great commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. To fulfill it, we don't worship other gods like power or prestige or wealth or nationality. And we don't build idols to those false gods either. We remember that God's name is holy and not to be used in idle conversation and certainly not as a form of swearing. And we set aside time each week to restore ourselves spiritually and rest as we worship God. That's the spirit of those laws. Expand on it as you feel called. The next six are about living in relationship with our neighbors, that other piece of the great commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. Honor your father, father and mother. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. And you shall not covet. There are 600 more laws in the Hebrew scriptures. Some we follow, some we don't. Some fall into the purity codes, some have to do with family relationships, others with worship and organization of society. Regardless of the type of law, we can determine for ourselves whether it continues to apply to us today based on the test of love. Is following this law going to uphold life or diminish it? Does following this law honor God and God's creation? Or does it detract from the beauty of all that God has created? Jesus made it clear he wasn't abolishing the law, but he also made it clear he would not uphold laws that were contrary to the spirit of God. Jesus calls us to follow him, and in doing that, we dedicate ourselves to being actively engaged in fulfilling the law. May we live with the courage to obey not the letter of the law, but the spirit of the law. And may our truest allegiance be to the spirit of the law 